The point of this video is just to give an introduction to the compound microscope at Kirkwood Community College. One of the first things we need to do is understand how to hold it properly. So put one hand underneath the base and one on the arm of the microscope. You'll need to carry it to your position on the bench. Unwind carefully the cord, plug it in. Make sure the cord doesn't hang over the table very much in case somebody could knock it off. And then turn on the switch to make sure the light works properly, otherwise the microscope won't do much for you. This is a monocular microscope, and here we have our two eyepieces, so two people can actually visualize this at the same time. In terms of lenses, these are our objective lenses. And best practice is to always start on the smallest objective, which is this one right here. This is four power. And then as we rotate through, we will have a total of four different objectives. And we can just rotate the headpiece in this type of manner. And there's a small little click that should occur to make sure the lens is in appropriately. Once again, these are our objectives and these are our eyepieces. This is the stage of our microscope. This is a mechanical uh, movement, so we can move or put our slides into this device and we can mechanically move it in the X and Y direction. We have the light source, which we have a switch right here, which will turn it on and off. This light will shoot through a structure down here, which we will define as a condenser. And this condenser, we can adjust how much light goes through it by adjusting what we call an iris. So we've got a little mechanical thing here our little lever, which will allow us to open and close and allow different amounts of light through. This will be important based on the type of lens that we will be using. Uh, typically, our higher magnification lenses, like what we see here, uh, they restrict the amount of light that comes through them, so we will want to open up the iris to allow more light to come through. These are our focus knobs, and what we can see here, we'll have actually two of them. We'll have a large one, or the closest one to the neck here, and this will move the stage up and down, and it will move it in a very coarse manner. So rough kind of focusing we do with this coarse adjustment knob, and we will only use it under low magnification so we don't crush our slider lens. And then as we move out, we will have what we call a fine adjustment knob. So once we get it roughly in focus, we can use this fine adjustment to get it really nice and focused as we look through the screen here. So we got base, arm, this is our headpiece, which we got our objectives, our eyepieces, our head here, which is our objectives, and we our objective head, and we've got four different lenses on this, or what we call objective lenses, condenser, and very importantly, never forget this, this would be our, allow us to control light, or our iris, and our light source, and our switch. Focus, fine focus, condenser unit, and the iris. Notice how I move it. We've got a lot of light coming through now. When I close it, we have less light. So that's what the iris will do. Here are our objective lens. This is four power. We'll rotate in the clockwise condition. Notice right here, it should click in. So you'll feel a little click right there. This is a 10 power lens. Then we'll have a 40 power lens. And then last but not least is what we call an oil immersion lens. And this is 100 times power. So the actual magnification of the microscope is determined by taking the objective lens multiplying it by the eyepiece and in most of our cases it's 10 times power. So in this particular case where I have a 4x lens and I have a 10x eyepiece I would be looking or uh, magnifying the object 40 times its normal size. This might be a good position to see once again what the iris does. So typically uh, one of the problems students have is under low objective it's a very big lens and so we don't need to have as much light come through so we can dial the iris down to decrease the amount of light. As we move up in magnification we'll want to increase how much light is coming through the iris 
because the lens itself is smaller in diameter and is not able to capture as much light. Getting ready to use the microscope. Make sure it's always plugged in. There are going to be two types of kind of lens papers or papers that you'll see within a laboratory. And these are important to really kind of keep track. This one, which we call chem wipes, this will not touch anything on the microscope. This would be a no-no. The reason are there tends to be little glass particles or little rough sections that could actually scratch the lens. So if you have anything wrong with the actual microscope here, like maybe the eyepiece is dirty or maybe the objective is dirty or maybe the condenser, what you want to use is what we call an optical lens wipe. So to kind of use this, what we kind of do is we'll rip out a piece of paper and there's lots of varieties of ways of doing this. I'll just kind of ball it up a little bit and just kind of in a circular motion gently wipe it and this can get off any oils and different types of things that may be there. And then under here for the objectives, you'll just want to gently wipe. And sometimes these do get dirty. Notice in some of these, this does push down, so just be aware of that. But a lot of times the objective lenses can get dirty and you can clean them, but you will always use the optical lens wipe. Never use the chem wipe. I'll show you where the chem wipe can come into use. Uh, the 4X you won't really be able to clean because the lens is actually beyond this black part here. Uh, and then the oil. You may want to clean the condenser. Let's get that clean. And, and this kind of rules out if you see any noise or any kind of dirt or something. Uh, we can use this lens paper to clean these parts. If it's very bad, you might be able to use uh, an optical lens cleaner. Uh, most of the time you probably don't need to use this. What I use the chem wipes for is when you're starting to actually use a slide like this, you may notice it's very dirty. So I will use a chem wipe and gently kind of go over it to get rid of any dust that may be there. Let's actually start to look at a slide. What I try to do first of all, before I put any slide on, I make sure I am under the lowest objective lens first. And I move my course adjustment knob until my stage is all the way down. I can then take my slide, after I've cleaned it, remember with the chem wipes and so on, I will place it into this device here. It should slip right in here, and then this will close and turn on my light. What I like to do actually at the beginning is kind of keep that iris wide open so I can kind of see my sample. And using the mechanical stage here, the top one will move it kind of in our Y direction, up and down. And then the bottom one will move it in X and Y. And I try to center, and this may be hard to see, my actual subject, if I can see it, uh, right in the middle. And this will then allow me to kind of have something to hopefully visualize. And I'm in this case, because I'm under the lowest objective, going to turn down the light a little bit. Now what I can do is when I go to focus, and I'll turn it counterclockwise to move it up, I can look through the microscope and gradually move it up, and hopefully my specimen will come into focus. And sometimes this can be hard to tell. And then once I'm in focus, uh, most of these microscopes are what we call parafocal, then as I move from one lens to the other, it should maintain its focus. There are going to be times where it goes off a little bit, but then once I start moving to higher objective lenses, uh, as long as I focus under a lower objective lens first, then I can use my fine focus knob and focus my specimens. And now, based on how well I see it or not, I may want to adjust the amount of light as I go through. So what we'll use in the laboratory will only be using kind of uh, the light microscope. So the oil objective lens we typically will not use. You actually need oil to focus the light into that lens. So that is roughly how we can use it. 
Now, once we have our subject in focus, we can move it around and there will be a pointer inside using our mechanical stage over here, which is very nice. Here's the slide. So this is in focus now under 4X. Click. This is what's in focus under 10X. This is what's in focus under 40X. And the oil immersion, so you can kind of see, it's right against the glass. Now I just want to show you it again, but from a different angle. First lower the stage all the way down. It's always good practice. Make sure it's on the lowest objective, which is our 4X lens. Use a coarse knob adjustment to move it down. I open up the iris, or make sure you're familiar with the iris again. Put the slide into the mechanical stage. Make sure it's on the edge and that the clamps is closed. And now you've got the ability here to move it. The top knob will do it in the Y position, and the bottom knob will do it in the X position. Then with your course knob adjustment on the lowest objective, move it up into focus. It's always a good idea sometimes if you're not sure to move it around just to make sure you're in the right focal plane. And then once you're totally in focus now, because of the parafocal nature of the lenses, you should then be able to move to the higher objectives. Remember to be able to adjust your iris to adjust your light levels and that will increase your contrast. And once again, because it's parafocal, you can adjust now just using your fine focus control as you move from one lens to the other. The higher the objective power, the more light's going to be needed to get through to visualize your subject. Then when you're all done, lower it down, the stage all the way down, remove your slide, and then return it back to the lowest objective for your next user. And make sure you turn off the light.